so far, our experts have given us a good understanding of what a high-performance engine needs to make more power. And it all boils down to the proper mixture of fuel and air. The power is in the fuel, but to unlock it, we need air. But not just any air. For every 10 degrees I can cool the air, I can get 1% more power. Hey, pay attention here. You can't get this kind of stuff at a car stereo installation shop. Now you've got a rule of thumb. One pound of boost, 7% more power if you don't heat the air. Um, 10 degrees drop in intake temperature, 1% more power if the pressure remains the same. One of the easiest ways to get cool air into an engine these days is to use bottled air, a big jug of nitrous oxide in the trunk. Just like supercharging, with nitrous oxide injection, there's good and there's not so good. The cool thing about nitrous is it's on demand. You use it when you want it. If you don't want to use it, no problem. Leave it off. That's a good point for nitrous. Now, here's the counterpoint. Nitrous oxide is a drag race tool. Uh, it is rarely used anywhere else. So if your life is seven seconds, fine. My answer to a nitrous guy is get a better job, earn some money, supercharge the damn thing, turbocharge it. And then if you want more, then put the nitrous. Because the thing about a, a supercharger or a turbocharger is when you push down the pedal, it's there. There's no tank to go dry. However, if your life is lived in seven second increments, nitrous oxide might just be the thing for you. We run a Gene Fulton 762 cubic inch engine, it has four nitrous kits. We only use three of the nitrous kits. On the engine by itself, approximately 1,400, and then we spray up to an uh, additional 1,000 horsepower. Blowers are cool. Nitrous makes incredible horsepower when you're hanging it all out. But there's one more method of getting it done, and it also happens to be Gale Bank's favorite horsepower maker. In any form of racing where supercharging or turbocharging is allowed, turbocharging has always prevailed. That's just how it is. The turbochargers do a better job of it. Gail Banks was one of the first people to really ring out turbocharged engines. His twin turbo, 800 horsepower, 82 Firebird, set a new record at Bonneville, and it created the turbo revolution on the street. This car has power windows, it has a tilt steering wheel, everything Firebird is in this car and it's working. So in essence what we have here is the world's fastest street machine, the world's fastest door slammer, and we held that title for like 11 years with this car. Uh, it's been 289 on gasoline. The engine is a big block Chevy with the Pontiac Pro Stock style cylinder heads, the first version that ever came. We helped refine them. It's twin turbocharged with two turbochargers off of an Offenhauser IndyCar. So we've got two of those. So there's enough air there to make a couple thousand horsepower. And this has two of my marine charge air coolers cooled up with ice water and then it has two dominator carburetors which we pressurized and it's ram air the air enters the car right there and is rammed up and into the compressor on the turbocharger this car held a land speed record for street cars for 11 years since that time Banks Engineering has become the world's go-to house for turbocharging in every application, from race cars to sport trucks to heavy haulers. And after almost three decades of being on the cutting edge of this technology, Banks is more pro-turbo than ever. The power you can make with a turbocharger is hard to, to dream. It's an incredible number. As far as the folks at Banks Engineering are concerned, turbocharged engines are the wave of the future. And the future is now. You can also can computer control the speed of the turbo, really refine it. And, and you're going to see more turbos coming back into the American marketplace. Stay with us. This Ram Air thing is just starting to spool up. Wait till you see what these guys are working on out in the shop. That's next on the American Muscle Car. Turbocharged American cars are nothing new these days. Over the years, Oldsmobile, Ford, Chevy, Buick, Pontiac, and Dodge have all served up cute little cars with cute little turbocharged engines. Buick's Grand National even earned muscle car status for its power output. And naturally, Gail Banks has been right in the midst of these efforts. 
We made 437 horsepower out of a 3.8 Buick. This is 1981. And it was twin turboed with front mounted turbochargers. If you look at the Buick Grand National, it has a single front mounted turbocharger. The whole idea of the Grand National was that Banks twin turbo car. But after working with every kind of forced air induction system, Banks has determined that with any gasoline engine, there's one wall you just can't get over, no matter how much technology you throw at it. The limit to supercharging or turbocharging an engine is either octane or physical strength. Physical strength means when you do this, you make much more pressure in the cylinder. So you're either going to push the cylinder heads off the head gaskets, or you're going to spit the crankshaft in the street, or put windows in, in the side of the block with the rods. Let's say you haven't found that yet. What is your limit now? Octane, fuel octane. Octane is a, a rating of the detonation resistance of the fuel. The higher the number, the more you can push it. I, for years, lived with the octane limit of street gasoline. And what I could do, do on the street was regulated by that octane. For banks, the answer to the octane problem is simple. Yes, you can intercool. Yes, you can inject water alcohol into the intake stream to help hold down the detonation. But ultimately, there's nothing like a diesel. Today, a large part of Gale Bank's time is occupied by extracting almost obscene amounts of horsepower from diesel engines. Banks believes the future of high performance lies with a diesel engine. With a diesel, there is no octane problem. They virtually run on detonation. In other words, there's no spark plug. Just the heat of compressing the air-fuel mixture ignites it. When it comes then to supercharging, or in this case, turbocharging your diesel, the limit isn't the fuel anymore. We've removed that with diesel. The limit is the physical strength of the engine. Now, for a lot of folks, the word diesel conjures up images of Mack trucks blowing black smoke and burning greasy number two furnace oil for fuel. If that's where your head's at, you ain't on the same page with Mr. Banks. The modern diesel, the diesel I advocate for the United States, won't be a heavy slug of iron. It, it may be all aluminum. We're working here at Banks on high-speed, high-output performance diesel. We will have the ability to turn diesel engines faster. I want to make diesel engines lighter weight. They have got too, too much torque advantage over gasoline. I want to give some of that away, spin them faster, and get them into lighter vehicles. That's my goal. Plus, there's a nice side benefit for breaking through the octane barrier. All of a sudden, hot rotting is green. The fuel's the key, and that old smelly diesel is gone. Diesels today are green and fun. In case you were wondering if Gail Banks really believes any of this diesel talk, check this out. What we're working on here is a twin turbo system to put in a stock pickup truck so guys can build diesel sport trucks. And we're actually going to build a couple of them ourselves. Two turbochargers on a Duramax 6.6 liter diesel. Here you see the intake manifolds on the diesel. These turbochargers will run the air in, into a charge air cooler in the front of the truck and then out of the charge air cooler and into these intake manifolds. Diesel muscle car engines? Could this really be happening? Check out this little monster. And here you see a full road race version of the Duramax. Here you see the twin turbos on top. Here's the two air intakes. The air cleaners are in underneath here. So, so you've got cold ram air coming underneath through the grill into the two air cleaners that are hanging beneath these pieces. Then the air flows through these into the compressor on the turbocharger. This twin turbo diesel is capable of in excess of 700 horsepower. This truck's around 3,700 pounds. It's heavier than I'd like. And this thing's not sorted out. And the horsepower currently, I've detuned. It's at 550. So we're 150 horse down and we're competitive. We're heavier than they are and we're competitive. Just wait till we get this thing completely dialed. So looking forward to this one. We're going road racing in a truck. That's so wrong. I just love it. Road racing diesel pickup trucks. 280 mile per hour street legal firebirds. <laughs> and we've just scratched the surface. Obviously, this subject of ram air is way more complicated than we can cover in just a half an hour. But if you're interested, there's plenty of information on the web. And the way things are going, muscle car fans, you need to be interested in the future. Fortunately, from here, it looks pretty bright. The modern hot rod will be fuel efficient. It can be done and blinding performance.
We're into future tech. While I appreciate the hell out of a traditional hot rod and the looks of one and how it performs, I want to do it in a new way. I want to build a street car that runs zero to 60 in the twos. That to me, put your eyeballs on the back of your skull. You know, that's acceleration. And you know what? After all this, so do we. Thanks for watching. And remember, don't crush them, restore them. <laughs>